It is February the 20th, 2021, and this is the future of photography. The future of photography. Hello, I'm Chris. There's Imar, there's Adrian, there's Jeremiah. Good hey folks. morning, evening, afternoon, wherever, <laughs> whenever you're watching this. We are back with another episode on, well, the future of photography, the past of photography, the, I don't even know where this one goes. Is it, is, is abstract time thinking the past future of photography? Future. Well, it's, anyway. it's a part of photography. Oh, they're coming to get you, Jeremiah. <laughs> they, 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 they will if I keep talking about the <laughs> abstraction of photography, <laughs> uh, which has often gotten us all into trouble. But um, personally, uh, I am an enormous fan of ab abstract photography. Um, I don't know where it came from, but, but I always, I, I suspect that as I came of age looking and experiencing art, uh, in the 60s and, and 70s that the influence of painting, like the painters like Rothko and Kandinsky, Barnett Newman, uh, as examples, there's so many who were working in color fields or abstraction. And, and as I absorbed that, I started to realize these were uh, artists primarily concerned with feeling rather than intellectual um, approach to kind of uh, pedantics, shall oh, we that, say. Which... That's interesting, because I was going to ask you to start with a definition. <laughs> yes. I think, I think it, last week when we were decimating stuff, I think I accidentally made some abstract images, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure nobody was going to pay me millions of dollars for them. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, so, so can, do we have a definition? Is that it, Jeremiah? Uh, I, I would I would define it by saying the intention of abstract photography is to generate feelings rather than information or story. Mm -hmm. Feeling, not meaning. Mm -hmm. And, and okay. I think that's a place to start. Um, it's not always uh, the case where an abstraction does generate feelings and that maybe that is the failure of the artist or the viewer <laughs> may not have feelings. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> or, they, or they are just the, not compatible. That could be the same the, thing. Yeah? That's right. Uh, that, that is 100% right. So, but but, but um, why should abstraction be um, relegated to the hands of sculpt sculptures, uh, sculpt doors and or painters i think Is henry miller abstract I, I i think it's easier in painting to be abstract than in photography isn't it no no i wouldn't no. think so no i don't no. think so okay i mean yes you you can give anybody a brush a blindfold and a splatter like mm. i mean point yeah. point the camera somewhere press the button and you will probably yeah. likely have something that's not abstract uh depends on the camera Mm. <laughs> yeah, <okay>. yeah. Mm. <laughs> try that with an eight by ten give him a broken yeah. camera and there we go <laughs> yeah a broken camera or something you do not focus you mm, do not okay. take a or conversely highly skilled macro photographers of which i have some mm. examples are capable of generating absolutely spectacular imagery very conscientiously to promote those kinds of aesthetic um influences or or, or uh, results so so i do think that if we start there with the idea that that we're going to discover how we feel about images that are say ill-defined now ill-defined could be anything we we've all posted on our um tfop uh instagram different examples of what an abstract image is. Um, you know, it could just be sources of form. It could be pure light. It could be just tonal ranges. Um, or it could be, you know, in my case, I did a very impressionist image of, of a um, lake and, and, uh, and mountain. So, That's not abstract, so, is it? I can clearly recognize a lake and a mountain there. 
Yes, but 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 it's being pushed towards a more um, it's true, yeah, uh, a less pictorial mm. way, and so I, I use this as a very um, a specific example of impressionist. Like some people could argue that the impressionists were, at the time, abstract painters. That was a big that's, argument. That's an interesting question. Because yeah. it, yeah. so it's a similar uh, kind of thing, though, wasn't it? I suppose with painting, so. It, is it, is it just, you know, it would be natural for it to happen that, you know, when photography began and people um, were able to represent what was directly in front of them, that's what they wanted to do. But as technology moved on a little bit um, and everybody began to start, uh, like, experimenting with the chemicals and the different ways of using the glass and the light and that, like, there was a lot of play involved uh in it seems to me anyway, just sort of looking back over the crazy stuff that the likes of um, Man Ray was doing in the yes, that, that, <laughs> in that, the dark. By the way, that, that's one hundred percent right. Abstract photography, whether it's salt prints or or sun prints or any, anything that uses light and a photosensitive material to create any kind of imagery, has been used from uh, pretty much the dawn of photography. Uh, Man Ray being a, a a good example in the 20s and 30s, doing some very beautiful um, work of abstract forms. Uh, and he may have used that photochemically, or he may have actually taken pictures of, of subjects that lent itself to abstractions. Mm. Um, uh, your your friend Chris, Don Kamarachka, is that how you pronounce it? Don Kamarachka. You know, being, yeah. Being a very, very... <laughs> With um, his macros, yep. Mm -hmm. A highly skilled macro photographer. Um, sometimes, you know, the the kind of quality of his imagery is very specific. An ant, mm -hmm. a bee, a flower. But sometimes they are forms and, and light and color that are uh, based on reflections from actual objects, and yet they don't represent that object. Mm -hmm. And and I think there's a lot of... Um, experiences uh, that we can play with with any camera we have whether it's a cheap toy camera an 8x10 camera the most sophisticated um, D DSLR all of these cameras um, when one focuses one's attention not to be representationally pictorial but to actually create uh, form function that are just pure abstraction. I think that that um, is a, a a route of discovery for um, for photographers. It's, it's it's an interesting place to play, isn't it? Because yes. it, it is a it is a form of image making in which perhaps process is more important than it is in some other form of image making. Especially when you consider photography, you know, from a you know, you could almost imagine a spectrum of extreme abstract art at one end of the spectrum and photojournalism, perhaps, uh, at the opposing end of the spectrum, where the idea is to to capture something in as realistic a way as possible. Um, I think it's, it's 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 so for me. There's a there's a, a sort of you know, not an intellectual definition of abstraction, but maybe something that yeah I. I that people encounter uh, outside a, a creative, uh, outside a, an artistic environment. So you could have an abstract of a, a scientific paper, mm. uh, or you could have uh, something that, uh, you know, uh, an, abs an abstract of, you know, a, an idea in the, I guess, possibly in the, the, the philosophical sense. You know, or, you, know, you can abstract some, is it is it true to say you would abstract some detail from from an overall picture? I know I, I know a lot of photography, a lot of photographic images that may be tagged in in whatever sense of the term tagged uh, as abstract often are based upon detail mm. rather than so sure. so you see you see you see in in good form uh, a, a portion of a, a detailed portion of something that's bigger and it's almost you know a, a quiz a guess guess the object kind of quiz you know? <laughs> does that count as abstract or does it have it does. to be, does it have to go through several steps perhaps is it does it have well, to be not recognizable does it have... no I, I i think that a uh, there's there's many ways to get there there is taking a 
basically a representational image of uh, of a landscape, um, and then playing with the focus, playing with the shutter speed, moving the camera, or taking that picture, putting it into a um, or you know applying um, editorial uh, techniques to take it further away from its original uh, representation. Um, and again, there is the ability for us to kind of look very closely at reality and, and reduce it to its most abstract. Um, I, I think what I'm getting here, one of the reasons that I like this subject as something that a photographer should explore is I think that when you spend a day exploring abstraction with whatever gear you're using, I think it brings you um, a closer to some of the more fundamental uh, joys of photography, which is it, it can do a lot more with less. And, and so whether it's mm -hmm. color, form, light, technique, um, they or sci science, all of these things can teach us something about whatever photography we are interested in, but do it in a new, uh, exciting way because there are no mistakes. It is <laughs> yeah. know, traditionally all it's, one mistake. It so is, it is, yeah, that that's interesting, isn't it? Because photography, yeah, uh, if, if I think about my own personal process for 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 photography which is, is not particularly radical you know there's, there's a capture element um which often is is pretty pretty true to life right uh, uh, you know in this, i mean you know, may play with settings on the camera but what you get is is it looks pretty much recognizable as to what you pointed the camera at in the first place when you click the shutter mm. then there is then there is 30 years of development in software for non-destructive editing <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's just like so i'm not abstracting anything am i i'm not i'm not i'm not taking anything what i'm doing is 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 i'm i'm playing because if i and if i don't like it i can i can start again i'm not it, it's it's definitely you know the the work with photographs once captured in, in the modern world is definitely a two-way street isn't it right you can go backwards and forwards with any mm. kinds of adjustments that you make uh so for me it's it it, it almost feels like cheating um uh, and unless i suppose unless i i deliberately set out to make an abstract kind of image through you know uh, and and take that through uh you know through um th i guess through through the whole process of making an image to make that you know starting off from an abstract place I don't, I don't know. It's, Would it not be difficult. fair to say that when you took the overall image, say, if, you, if you're going to crop it, that um, when you took that overall image, your intention was to capture the whole thing. But later, when you came back and you were viewing it, you noticed a specific detail that sent your brain off and, ooh, I need to do something with this. Then that's not cheating at all, I don't think. No, well, I see, that's an interesting thing in its own right, isn't it? Because, you know, we've talked often about, you know, various different capture technologies and how they're evolving very quickly over time and how actually, you know, you know to take uh, to take a, a, an image of a, of a, with a lot of coverage, but specifically thinking that the crop is what you're after, um, that, you know, that, that is often the way that, you know, we have to work perhaps with, you know, um, phone cameras at least until very recently where it was difficult to get any change in focal length mm. so uh, it's 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 an interesting it's an interesting topic for me mm. i think in some ways in some ways making abstract photographs today is is easier than ever and i think in other ways it may be even harder than ever if that makes sense i mean I don't know. Mm. For, for me for me getting something uh, abstract it it's easiest if i leave a lot of a lot of that to of the capture to chance mm. to to mm -hmm. some uh, to introduce some random element and i just rem i just remember we were in uh 2015 i think i was in uh, moscow with a group and we were walking along a road at late night and we ended up that there were like all these street lights and they had interesting colors and um we ended up being a bit bored, we were a bit bored, and then um, one of us deci decided to suggest camera tossing. 
<laughs> now, <All right. laughs> now the, the proper camera tossing means you throw your camera in the air, set it yeah. on a like set it on a ten second timer, and at second eight you toss it in the air, and then it takes its shot while it's tumbling <laughs> through the air, and then you catch it again, which is a bit scary. So we didn't do that, <laughs> but what we did is we did a we did a low <clears throat> a low impact version of that. Um, so you would do the same thing: set a camera on a timer, like a two second timer, and hold it at the strap with one hand and then toss it just a little uh, bit up with the other hand so that the strap wouldn't catch so that it would be in free fall for a second or two mm. and then you'd catch it and we did this above a, up above a, some 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 grass so it wouldn't damage the camera if it dropped and we ended up with <coughs> these kind of pictures oh, and cool. yeah. it was mind blowing what came out especially when you if you managed to not jerk the camera so it would have very organic lines very uninterrupted mm -hmm. lines um free fall that's this is free fall in moscow and this element of randomness i mean that was one of the most memorable most fun evenings with photography and mm -hmm. everyone in the group mm -hmm. even those who were kind of really pr precious with their cameras <laughs> ended up doing it <laughs> and everyone got some really amazing things out of it so the was, there alcohol random alcohol in, was there alcohol involved <laughs> nope no, nope. later. No Russian they, vodka. Alcohol was later, um, but yeah, it 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 was it was really just it was for 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 many in the group it was an an eye opening experience because they were always glued to the to the reality of photo and then that that abstract and random element um, took a lot of them out of the comfort zone, but it ended up freeing them and it ended up uh, making them enjoy this really. It's so, funny from from. Go ahead. I think that's a good example of what I mean by sometimes it being harder than ever to make abstract photography. Because you have when, to let go, you, right? When you, when you, you and sometimes physically you, you have to let. Yes. You know, literally, if you you're throwing your you're throwing your five thousand dollar camera uh, around. You know, yeah. Uh, and I know not that? everybody has five thousand dollar cameras, <laughs> but yeah, you know, mm. what, whatever the actual monetary value, your a camera is often something that you've put a significant amount of money for you. Mm. You know, uh, into into the purchase of a camera and and a lot of thought and 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 research and emotional cho in the choice as well. Mm. So just to, to to literally throw that it is is quite astonishing i remember i mean i've talked a lot on uh, on this podcast and, and elsewhere about my little olympus tough camera and and that, that no matter how many times i pick that camera up and throw it into a swimming pool or throw it into the sea <laughs> <laughs> it's the subject especially the sea especially when it's way deep and you know that if it sinks you're never going to get it back the psychology of throwing a camera into the sea is really interesting <laughs> <laughs> really interesting um well, it, i'm going to give you a, a sort of a slightly different approach i mean my, my you know my own work kind of if, if i had to kind of identify a overarching theme in it is, is very much about taking um, uh, digital uh, constructs and making them appear very realistic. Uh, and conversely, taking uh, realistic, i.e. photographed, um, you know, places or people and, and making them feel not that real. And so abstracting them to certain degrees. Mm. Um, sometimes those abstractions feel real, but they are not really a simulacrum a representation of the reality. And so using that tension between what we uh, perceive as real truthful and not, that little gray area is, is an area that I continually am attracted to exploring as an artist, as a photographer, and as a filmmaker, too. Um, so, you know, I take a lot of, of joy from people like, uh, I don't know. Well, James Fox, I used him as an example here. We can bring him up. Um, he's a macro photographer. Uh, he's photographing real things. Uh, but uh, I think, like Don Kamarachka, is, is absolutely dazzling in his technique. Um, these are these are, I think, 
stunning, breathtaking imagery, mm. um, abstract, but and his color work is uh, equally fabulous. Is, is this James Fox the actor? No, no, I don't, different James. No, Fox. no, no okay. it's a young. Yeah, yeah, and his, his color work is is astonishing too. And so the, these are examples of of real world and not real world. Um, I think early on, I I had. Um, so I, does he take the real yeah. image and then colorize them or work on them digitally after? I I, I couldn't get I, a sense of how he made them at all. I don't know. You don't know. Uh, honestly, he doesn't yeah. really have. A, he he does a lot of crypto art, so I I assume that that he is very well versed in you know layered editing okay. i.e. Um, I also think a lot of this is in the in the building the set and the the technique there. Possibly, yeah. Um, it's it, it's so going back going back to your your original definition, Jeremiah, I'm looking at these and these are amazing images. Um uh, I can't tell what they are. So um but are they are they making me feel something? Um, going back to your original definition. Well, um, for me, they 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 provoke a sense of wonder. Yeah, they really do. They look like um, um, cellular, you know, photography, like inside the body or um, inside a cell. You, you know, you know what I mean. Yeah, I do. They're organic. They feel mm. organic, and in being organic, they feel connected to us as humans, and so. Um, or something uh, I from just the feel, or, or landscape, or, yeah, yeah, something like that. But they feel of the earth. Yeah, we, we connect with them on a deep lizard brain way. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> what what I like yeah, yeah. about them. Um, you know, uh, Francis Seward, another example I use, uh, who does work that is, you know, v very different. Um, she's working in a kind of landscape abstraction um, that I, I, I feel is also very provocative and very sensual, uh, um, very controlled in terms mm. of the color. Um, and, and yet, you know, I look at some of these things and, and there is a, a, a kind of breathtaking response to a landscape that feels Mm. Like I'm looking at a real astonishing landscape mm. that's taking my breath away. So, so this I get. So right. So mm. that last one, as as interesting as those images were, um, I that's don't gorgeous. get it. Right. And mm. this is this is. I think what you you, you were asking Jeremiah earlier is, is it a failure of the artist or a failure of the viewer? And it's absolutely <laughs> it's absolutely a failure of the viewer, right? Because I you know, I, and I know this from trying over the years that there's very little you know abstract art that i actually understand or actually get these are very interesting francis seward because these are so like paintings i can, aren't they? I can see yeah. i can i can see a link from these mm -hmm. finished images back to a, an original real world thing mm -hmm. which for me is abstraction in that it's it, it, and it does meet your definition, mm. Jeremiah. I think in the, mm -hmm. it, I can feel the landscape, mm. um, and it's brought. Uh, and she's chosen to focus on perhaps particular she's aspects of a landscape. All about the image. horizon line. Maybe isn't it's she? the color, or maybe you know, you know that maybe it's storminess, or maybe it's mm. a glorious sunset, or maybe you know. And, and the, there are feelings. You know, it, it, for me, she's it's abstracted uh, the the essence of an image. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it may be a very narrow sliver of the essence of an image sure but for me that 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 makes it successful at least in the technical sense try on andrew s gray be, but, um, oh these are gorgeous i think you'll like these yeah. as well because they like they turners do draw. yeah Don't they? No, i never liked turner much oh my god <laughs> these these are gorgeous <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, Turner will never find himself in the <laughs> National Portrait Gallery. That's how much a loser he is. <laughs> too much, too much fog. Um, but look, look at these are. Ap I think these are absolutely beautiful. And again, gorgeous. they they draw from reality, mountains, mm. weather, yeah, cityscape, whatever. Yeah. But yeah, but they're provocative. They're abstract, and I find these, you know, um, you know, in his little 
piece here inspired by the paintings of old English masters with a mix of camera <laughs> techniques and post-processing. Mm -hmm. I have developed these painterly impressions. And I, and, I have to say, and I have to say for those who are just listening to this and who are kind of probably a bit disappointed right now, <laughs> it is abstract photography. It's really impossible to describe any of it other yeah, than yeah. it's, it's, it's bright in the middle, middle and darker on the outside. <laughs> we do no invite all Look our that. audio but the, the links, to, the links in the show notes the will take you to their galleries. And mm. I hope you are already following along if you're uh, listening to the audio version of this. But yeah, it's yeah, de de definitely, stuff. definitely an opportunity to watch on the YouTube mm -hmm. this week. It is, <laughs> you're right, Chris. It is extraordinarily difficult to try and describe abstract imagery. Yeah, uh, there's no no frame of reference, is there? There's no common frame of reference in words that you can use, which I guess is part of for me is what part of what makes it makes it abstract if you could say you know uh, uh there's an abstract picture here it's of a clown riding an elephant right that's that's not abstract then is it it's a picture <laughs> of a clown riding an elephant <laughs> sorry i just watched the latest episodes of wonder vision last night i've got a surface <laughs> on my brain so what about what about things that look real but maybe the story is abstracted so what about something like uh, I don't know something like David Lynch, mm. right? For t TV and film director David Lynch. Do, do, do those count as abstract, or are they merely yeah something like more Twin surreal? Peaks? Is that than, surreal? Mm, than, no, that's more surrealistic. Okay. As my my business partner was the one of the lead writers on Twin Peaks, so I <laughs> do know something about it. Um, these are they're more surrealistic. They're not abstract. I, I think, think um, the abstract, I, I often find that it, it's a detail. If I find myself doing something or, or capturing something that's abstract, it's because it's a detail. Uh, that's just something that catches your eye. Like, um, I don't know, um, the way the water is rolling down something or um, the color of something after it got wet or a texture of a fabric or sure. something like that and that's an easy way in i suppose but you're it's kind of unconscious uh more than and uh, uh, well the other way i find it easy to find a, a kind of some kind of abstract uh, abstraction or when i look for it is in architecture uh it's, well, it's yes. easy to find yeah. um uh, sure forms and light mm, uh, mm. I, I think that's true uh, I, I think that, you know, if, if, if we could do one thing in this particular uh, podcast is encourage people to kind of set out um, with their camera or their, um, the, their editing software and say, you know, today I'm going to explore form or today I'm going to explore color or, or, or I'm going to um, explore the relationship of texture to each other That's and and just dive into that and see what you see whether it's a walk whether it's around your home or with friends um whatever that is once you've kind of taken a small body of work and really worked it and and achieved an exploration of that i think that that will have benefits to whatever kind of photography you're doing in that it will give you an an added dimension of perception and i th i think uh basically uh what we as photographers want to do is bring people back to being able to see and experience uh the world through a different eye a different that's uh, understanding that's an interesting challenge there i've got a question for you a technical question for you in a minute jeremiah but first i'm really interested in what Ema thinks about that because you mentioned textures and Ema, you work with texture a lot in your imagery mm, you know what, what's what is is any of this resonating with you for your own work and, and you know, absolutely are, are you abstracting? Yeah. i i i do enjoy it i don't always do it um i don't know what stops me actually because sometimes i feel like uh, some some of of the images that I put out that I I could push them further, but they they'd be so far away from what I'm doing already that it it looks too too far away and it doesn't sit with the rest, you know. So 
That's a stupid reason. So you need reason, a second but... persona. You need a second uh, yeah, identity. Yeah, like a, yeah, I nearly or do. Another, another folio. Yeah, yeah, and like I think that's it. And the, like it's so random. Like I don't, I, I don't have a style as such. Like I, I find myself, but it, it's, it's all down to play for me and just like literally experimenting with things and um, just you know trying something. And if it doesn't work, doesn't work. Try something else. Throw things into. Um, 10 different apps and just <laughs> treat it in different ways and see what comes out the other end. And it, it's, it's never too contrived, you know, um, it doesn't have to be, but no, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't I mean, have to. And that's, uh, do you know, I, I, I'm totally unapologetic about that. Like I, that's, that's the way it is. That's what I enjoy to do. So, um, but yeah, I think it feeds into so many other kinds of this week I bought myself, um, <laughs> there's nothing to do with photography, it's, uh, a loom, <laughs> Uh, table oh, really? wow. Yeah, this is just something I've always wanted to do and uh, I'm just going to start a course on weaving now. So like that feeds into my whole texture buzz, you know, yeah. um, and it, it's always there. And it's, I can kind of I can almost see already now um, the possibilities for that, because like, OK, we've yarn, we've thread, but um, like I've experimented in the past with chopping up photographs and weaving them. So um yeah, uh, you know, it's nice. uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but by the way, um, there is a company in Belgium that I've been corresponding with. I haven't for about since the pandemic, but um, of taking uh, a one of my digital images and processing it through their uh, computerized jacquard and doing a, a, a tapestry. Oh, wow! Um, so again, in the exploration of yeah. old techniques and new mm. uh, that's something but it was so it's expensive. actually something that oh, yes. <laughs> couldn't <laughs> have afforded it something you that, know because you want to do a proper yeah. big highly oh, woven yeah well i gotta was... you gotta start small now so um oh my small god first, well, they don't do small. i did it crossed my mind today actually that maybe the first project could be an image translated into you know pick one of my favorites and translate it into into a weaving like it's all pixels. We'll see what happens. Um, yeah. I, I like there was an experiment that I did uh several years ago. I, I, I have the, the images, but for for about six months I decided to take um all my photographs uh matching what I see without my glasses on. <laughs> so trying to match the focus without my corrective lenses okay. and I did it, it, it took a lot um, and did you know maybe about a hundred images that um, I titled effectively by my prescription number <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> right. yeah, I have a friend who did something similar a few years back Graham from Sunny 16 he, he, he ended up with a whole new Instagram uh, account called he called it myopic me oh, and he deliberately yeah, yeah, set out yeah. with, a, with a, a, yeah. a pretty broken film camera mm. uh, that that you know and lens that wouldn't focus properly um to take photos that were reflected the world as he saw it without his glasses yeah uh, his reality <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really, yeah. um and it was, it was very beautiful you know you, you get the I, I remember we were in fiji and and taking these completely impressionistic defocused um, images uh, of this kind of absolutely stunning landscape seascapes mm. um, really were very provocative and in so many ways more effective in terms of the emotive value than a snapshot mm. where everything was in focus mm. so yeah. um you know, there's there's another approach of just looking at the world in a different way, and I think that's the best uh, value yeah. of photography focus, at large. Focus is overrated anyway. So <laughs> with that, okay. I think we can. Oops, I'm I'm disassembling my microphone here. That's not a good idea. You're right there. Um, <laughs> yes, I am. I'm just struggling with cables here because I moved stuff around. Um, with that, I think we can. Go to the picks of the week, and uh, sure. uh, I would like to start with Imar, but I cannot well, open the know, website that you. Well, sent that's me. okay because I want to change. I want to change my pick now. That was just a bit of fun, and it was a little test to see um, what kind of thinker that you are, um, because we were talking about abstract thinking. Um, but we didn't talk about Win Bullock, who I, I kind of love what he was doing. How do you spell yeah. the name um, Win? 
win w it's y my, n i think i have there's a link i put it in yeah i put it in there the there's uh, a lovely uh, youtube video where of of it's the, the link is underneath um the link to his work in the workflowy i'm just yeah. trying to i find. have it like uh you could see wind bullock ah in here my, we go okay uh, found him found him and the color color light abstract here we go. yeah yeah well, I, I kind of, I just liked his work in general and everything I did, he did. I think even the stuff that is figurative has a little bit of, I don't know, he had a kind of an abstract eye or an abstract way of looking at things. And Chris, if you go down to under Wind Bullock on the uh, recording notes, you'll see color light abstractions. Yeah. Uh... His whole, um, his whole thing was not just to ah, reproduce the go. objects, but he wanted to make um, what was invisible to the eye visible. So if yeah. you kind of look at it in that. Yeah. And there's a little bit, yeah, the video is beautiful of these. But um, I was reading that uh, apparently he was so unhappy with how they came out as prints or that he, he was never happy with the papers that were available or the processes that were available to him. And he ended up keeping many of them um, as transparencies and he projected them when he showed them. There's so isn't a, that interesting? A, there's power in the projection for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Okay, so he, thank you. Magic. Let's see. Jeremiah, you have brought us <laughs> something <laughs> a, wild. I'd say I call it something wild. Luna, something lunatic that relates to the... This is a very interesting artist, uh, Benjamin Bardou. Um, his work is... Uh, it's. Technically dazzling. Um, I'm, I, I may understand about 10% of how he's achieving this. Um, it, look, it looks he, like a hyperlapse point cloud. It's a point it, cloud it, kind it, of thing. It yes. is. It, it is. But then he's using um, a lot of uh, 3D um, applications and software and is building some very, very interesting things view you, on blockchain yeah, like that. uh-huh that is i think that's how he sells his work or can sell his yeah, work possible yeah let's have a quick look at it one one more because it is really interesting it takes a while to load mm. so there's a lot yeah. of data being loaded but then oh yeah there's yeah. a interesting mm. 3d rendition looks a bit like these these uh, like these lidar pictures right Mm. They do. Yeah. Has a it bit does, of that. Yeah. <laughs> There's definitely depth mapping here. Very so, interesting. Um, for for those audio aficionados, this is well worth exploring as as a a kind of um, another way into abstract work. Right. Um, just a whole other version. And then we have. Um, Switch over to Adrian's abstract photo. Which one is that? The first one? Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's Gr the, the gray the, one. Mm. It's the one that looks like a gradient. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so this is so this is my pick. Um, uh, just something I've been playing with, um, uh, and, and I think I may have mentioned it before on the podcast, but but maybe not. But um, I I like sometimes to. Uh, d show display my my images on my kindle so i have yeah, just your yeah, basic several years old it's probably not even a recent model anymore but um i have a several years old kindle paper white i think which has a a a fairly small black and white e-ink screen um and i find often just the the, the low fidelity of, of that and i have no idea how many grays it can show maybe 256 i don't know um uh, there the, sometimes you can get some nice interesting things so this actually you're showing now chris is is actually just me taking a snapshot of something i'm i'm displaying on my kindle so the effect doesn't really come across but i think that for me part of the process the reason for this part of the process of abstracting things is to take away and i think if you're t if you're displaying something on a uh, in a format like a kindle you are taking away a lot of the information and and that is one way that i have explored to try and abstract an image 
so you know uh, there's not a lot of detail in this it was it was actually a fairly close-up shot that was playing with color and pattern anyway in the first place um I like uh, it. For, 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 if you're interested the left hand side of the shot is a wall and the right hand side of the shot is a door frame but that <laughs> probably go. wouldn't come out from looking mm-hmm. at it right now mm-hmm. no that's why it's called an abstract photo <laughs> um yeah so 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 that that that's i, I think just to if, to encourage people that part some ways display and then recapture can be part of the abstract mm. process as well okay and last but not least, I am also not going abstract, even though it could probably be abstract. And it's a, a video by a channel called Cinema Cartography, which if you are into movies, into cinema, they have episodes on um, a specific topic. In this case, it's an, on animation. And it goes into 25, 30, 40 different um groundbreaking animations animation movies um mm-hmm. techniques all sorts of things okay. uh look looking at history looking at where things come from where they're going and um it's a, it's an exploration it's like a half an hour of exploration on animation and this one was so wow. captivating what's, what's their channel really? their channel if you are into movies at all their channel is uh amazing just amazing mm. cinema cartography and this one is the cool. title the animation that changed cinema and it yeah <laughs> after that can i know, jump in with a second pick of the week chris because we didn't get to talk about it before we before we went to picks of course you can so this is to this is to help people who like me are educationally and artistically challenged um it is a, a little blog post just for fun uh, that helps you define whether or not the abstract art you're looking at is actually any good or not. <laughs> because, <laughs> to be good. honest, I can't tell most of the time. <laughs> mm-hmm. Can I can I throw can I throw something in? Because did, we've did, often did you link that blog? AI. Is that somewhere? Yeah, it's, it's, it's in the sh- it's in the recording notes. Um, it it's a uh, it, it'll and we'll make sure it's in the show notes. Um, <laughs> ah, I see. It's, I see. it's just a bit. Found it's it. just a bit of fun. Um, mm. uh, but it's it, it also can, can it was also genuinely interesting to me. You know, it's only one point of view. I'm not saying whether it's right or wrong, but it just gives you a few <laughs> things to look like a look for. Like, <laughs> is there intent? Is there consistency? Okay, you know, uh, it's you, funny that you you say this. I, I was listening to a podcast the other day about machine learning and teaching computers how to compose music. There, there's evidently something called song weaver song ra- mm-hmm. I, I forget what it's called I know it. but they they pro they programmed it with photos and lyrics and thousands of hours of music blah 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 and they were playing some of the worst versions of Christmas songs <laughs> that had been composed by this and um, w- one of the big issues was with machine learning how can you teach a computer whether it's good or bad (laughs) whether their example works or not yeah it's difficult it's hard especially um well or or if if you look into machine learning and the the abstractions of machine learning then um it's often just a imitation it's often just mimicking what's already there and uh playing on that so yeah, everyone, go out, do a f- abstract photography, play with the tools that you have. Uh, maybe toss them in the air, try to catch them, though, <laughs> and uh, don't... Don't blame we'll us. We'll tell you if it's any good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we'll apply the rules in the blog post to define whether it's any good or not. Disclaimer, we're not paying for any broken cameras. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's not our fault. Definitely not our fault. So, yeah, I guess um, let's wrap this up. Thanks, everyone. And uh, we'll be back soon. You can find us online and well, wherever you find your other podcasts. Bye-bye. You've been listening to The Future of Photography. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. Mm-hmm.